Hello guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to the Free Hours. It's Luke here. Feeling a little bit better as the days are going on. Uh, definitely felt a bit rough this week, but yeah, feeling a bit better now. Got the weekend to rest. Um, hopefully not too stressful for the Manchester United game tomorrow. But here it is, the Manchester United preview, guys. Loads to go into. Um, but yeah, still absolutely buzzing from the Europa League game. You know, should be a team full of confidence. You know, thinking we can beat anyone at the moment. Um, you know, two clean sheets in a row. Uh, but let's talk about it anyway. So, West Ham versus Man United, 2 o'clock at the London Stadium. Will be the 147th meeting between the two teams. Um, last time out, obviously, we played them three times last year. And sadly, we did lose on all occasions. We lost 1-0 away in the league. 1-0 away in the FA Cup. Um, and then, obviously, the controversial 3-1 win for them at the London Stadium. Where the ball definitely went out of play. Uh, was it for Pogba's goal? Um, but we started that game so well. Actually, we remember we were sort of like came out of blocks. Um, Bowen was brilliant that game. Um, but yeah, it just went to pieces. Our sort of our heads went after that um, controversial goal went in. Hopefully, not won't be the case tomorrow. Um, last time we did beat them at the London Stadium, that was a fantastic game back in September 2019. Um, goals from Yarmolenko and Cresswell with that absolutely blinding free kick. Um, a real good goal. If you don't remember it, go check it out on YouTube. It was a top, top goal from him. Um, so Man United, you know, they want to win the league this year. They've gone, they've bought some really top, top players. And um, I'm talking top, top players. Jaden Sancho, not quite seen it yet in him, but hasn't scored a goal yet. Typical West Ham. Let's hope we're not that typical West Ham and he comes and gets his first goal the weekend. Obviously, Ronaldo's back there. Um, already showing how good he is. Listen, <clears throat> it puts me to shame. The guy's the same age as me, 36, and he's pacing past Premier League defenders, got the body of an absolute, you know, Greek god. Um, so good, so composed. Like, he's goal against Newcastle, the second one. Just the way that touch and the finish just showed, like, he's just so, so good. For those of you interested, his record against West Ham, he's played a seven times and scored five goals. I do remember, though, being at a game where um, Rob Green saved his penalty in a game we went on to win, um, which was a great, 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 great day. Um, yeah, so they're top of the league at the moment. Three wins, one draw. Last time out, though, against young boys. You know, a mistake by former Hammer Jesse Lingard gave young boys the win in the 95th minute, and I have to say, I did have a little chuckle to myself on Wednesday, on Wednesday night. Um, their last game in the league was against Newcastle at the weekend. A real strong 4-1 performance. Newcastle were really, really, you know, just individual errors were terrible. But um, I thought Newcastle played quite well in patches in that game and had some really big chances, but just didn't, wasn't able to convert them. I and maybe that's something that we need to be aware of on Sunday, you know, when we've got that chance to play that ball over or, you know, when someone's in a better position, we've got to take the chances, you know, because you will be punished, you will. It's just... The nature of having someone like Ronaldo in your team, Ronaldo only needs one chance. One chance, a header, a left foot, a right foot, a free kick. He is that good. Um, also for them, listen, danger men. I could have, I could, the list could have gone on and on and on. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, I can't stand the bloke, but you got, there's no denying how good a player he is. He, he's changed the mentality at Manchester United when he came in about a year or so, didn't he, a couple of years ago. Um, so good. His goal against Newcastle was, you know, incredible. Uh, just the ability. You know, how do you defend against that? How do you defend? Unless you're saying, you know, Rice, Socek, go straight through him. Which, yeah, okay. But how many times can you go through without getting booked? It's, he is just that good. Um, Greenwood, you know, arguably one of the best finishers in the Premier League at such a young age. Always, always a danger. Um, Ronnie Guff, I already spoke about. Sancho, yet to hit the heights. Great, skillful, talented player. Um, you know, yet to show what he's about yet. Obviously, whether we see him or not, Jesse Lingard, would he come? Um, would he come on? Maybe scored against Newcastle weekend. Really good goal actually as well. But then obviously made that huge error in the um, Champions League. So who knows with him? He'll be well up for it if he does play against us. If he doesn't play this game, I would expect him to play the cup game on Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously Paul Pogba. Love scoring against West Ham, you know, seems to have been galvanised by the signings of Fernandez and Varane and um, Ronaldo. So it, he's got a little bit between his teeth and seems to be playing at a top, top level. 
Um, if you're interested, guys, Oli has played, uh, that's Oli got a social, Oli has played West Ham seven times as a manager, won four, lost, uh, lost two, and drawn one. Uh, Moyes' record played a hell of a lot of games against Manchester United, played them 31 times, only winning four, four of those games. Um, drawing seven and lost 20, 20 out of 30 against Manchester United. Moyes' record against Oli, so Oli versus Moyes, is five games, um, one win for Moyes, uh, one draw and three losses. Um, so three wins for Oli. Um, in terms of the strengths of Manchester United, finishing, you know, ruthless finishers, get the chance, he's going in. Um, they create chances, um, you know, from all over the pitch, every player is capable of that crossfield pass, um, the through ball as well. Very good at long shots, as, as so many. Ronaldo, Fernandez, they're all capable of a long shot. Pogba's capable of a long shot as well. Counter attacking, you know, is absolutely ruthless, um, and they're very good at defending set pieces. Their weaknesses, on the other hand, um, they do sometimes, um, you know, get left a bit exposed in terms of the offside trap. They like to play the offside trap. Um, and sometimes it does come and haunt them a little bit. It's a shame Antonio's not playing, but we'll go into West Ham in a minute. Aerial duels, they're not very good at aerial duels, even though they have got people like Maguire and Varane in there. It still is a slight weakness, mainly in the midfield area. Um, they, they actually struggle to defend against long shots as well. A lot of their goals they can see come, in again, uh, come from long range. Um, and they do make some individual errors as proven in the Champions League the other day. And the Newcastle game actually was an individual error that led to Newcastle's only goal. Um, style of play, they like to control the opposition's half. They will camp themselves in West Ham's half. They will pass the ball around, frustrate, make us move. Um, and that's where we need to be, you know, good pressing as we have been. Um, but do it cleverly. Um, middle attack is where most of the attacks come from. They like to attack down the middle. And as I said, short passes is their thing. Um, I expect them to line up as they have been, 4-2-3-1, uh, with De Gea in goal, Shaw at left back, Varane, Maguire, Wan-Bissaka, Fred and McTominay in the middle, Greenwood, Fernandez, Pogba and Ronnie up front. Um, like I say, going to be hard for us. In terms for us, obviously no Mikel Antonio, the hero from um, you know Thursday night, him and Dex were just immense that night. Um, so he is going to have to bring out something different. I did just read an article as well. Apparently Ben Rama, I don't know if you remember from the game, did have a little knock on his knee. Did carry on the rest of the game, but apparently he may not be fit. So it may force Moyes to change formation totally. Um, I think he may go for a 3-4-2-1. Uh, obviously more of a 5 at the back when we're defending, but pushes into a 5 in midfield. Um, but sorry, a 4 in midfield when we're attacking, just to add that fluidity. Um, for me, that would mean Fabianski still starts in goal. Uh, Zuma, Ogbonna and Cresswell make the three centre-backs. Soufal at right wing-back. Masawaku at left wing-back. Rice and Sochik filling in as the centre-mids. Fornells and Klasic, maybe. And Bowen up top. I don't think he will start Yarmolenko up front. I think we'll go for little, small attackers. Could be the other way. It could be Bowen and Fornells with Klasic up top. Vlasic up top. Klasic, Vlasic, Vlasic, Klasic. Whatever you prefer. I've decided I'm just going to say both now. Because I keep getting digged out in the comments. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. What he could do, he could potentially go Rice, Sochik, Fornells. And have both of them up front. He could have Bowen and Klasic, Vlasic up front. <laughs> it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game. Um, it's going to be a tough game. Um, I think we'll give him a good game. Um, hopefully we won't have too much fatigue in the midfield. You know, there has been a couple of games where Rice and Sochek have looked a little bit leggy, especially after the international break against Southampton. Um, it was nice to see, you know, see him being taken off. I do want to see Crowell. I really do want to see what he's about. Um, maybe the cup game will come for him. Um, but yeah, the options might be a little bit limited on the bench tomorrow. Uh, that's the only thing, obviously, with him having to use the players that it might limit the options to come off the bench if we do get ourselves in trouble. Um, yeah, like I said, we should be full of confidence. We're, we're, we've not been beaten. We've had two clean sheets in a row. Uh, Zuma was in Mench, you know, the other night. So, yeah, why not? Um, a draw would be a fantastic result. It really, really would, because it would keep the um, undefeated thing going. Um, a win would just be, you know... Luke starts believing we're going to win the league. <laughs> um, a draw, but a loss, again, won't be a disaster. 
it wouldn't be a disaster. It'd be a bit deflating, uh, depending on you know the manner of the loss. But um, yeah, I think you know if we if we turn up and play to the stand, we can. I'm talking Leicester performances and the Zagreb performance in the week. We could get a two-two. We could get a one-one. You know. Um, you know, to actually win the game, I think Man United would have to be well off, um, and we'd have a little bit of luck. Um, I'm got to be honest though, I think we might just lose this. I think they might just have a little bit too much, um, and the fact that that young boy's performance, you know, they'll be hurt from that. And I think it's just unfortunate actually that West Ham are the next game, um, and you might get a rea reactionary performance from Manchester United where they may come a come out as two one three one winners. Let me know what you guys think. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the game, guys. Hopefully, it's really positive. Um, I might do a little live show later, so if you are about and you want to come on and talk West Ham, uh, check it out. Not a, not a definite, but keep your eyes open. I may do one. Until next time, guys, thank you so, so much for uh, commenting and liking and subscribing. So close to 4K now, so get us out there. Hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Come on, your ways. Keep believing. Let's go.